Hello and welcome to the masterclass series at the Les Ambassadeurs, where today we will discover how energy is stored within a mechanical watch movement. In the last two episodes, we assembled the keyless works where we ignite the power by turning the crown and transmit the power to the next section. Now we need to find a way to store this transmitted power, which happens within the power section using a spring. So let's figure out how a spring can store energy and what it really takes. Before we move on, let's discuss energy in general, because once we understand the concept of energy, everything related to a mechanical watch will be easier to grasp. So what is energy and how is energy created? Energy is what makes things happen. It is like an invisible power that puts things in motion makes things grow or change. It is important to know that energy already exists, meaning it can be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another or transferred from one object to another. In all cases, the total amount of energy remains the same, but it changes forms and moves from one place to another. And this is what we actually want to achieve within a mechanical watch. We want the energy you exert when turning the crown to transmit to another component so that eventually this component will put something else in motion. In order to do that, we need a way to store this energy and one approach is to create tension through a spring while we compress it or twist it. To give you a better understanding, let's look at this coil spring because it demonstrates the concept very well. If I compress this coil spring, we create tension because the coil spring is elastic and wants to return to its natural shape. Essentially, what we're doing here is using energy in the form of a physical act generated through a human compressing a spring with his fingers and transmitting this energy to another object, in this case, a coil spring. Now, we can use the coil spring to set something else in motion by harnessing the energy we initiated through our fingers. Using the same concept, but a different approach, we store energy within a mechanical watch movement. But how exactly? We know now we source energy through a spring, which is compressed together and wants to release tension. And we know tension released is energy. Within a mechanical watch, there is a spring known as the mainspring. This component operates on the same physical principle as a coil spring to store energy, generating tension through twisting rather than compression. Once we have found a way to store energy, there are two crucial factors to consider. First, we want to fully compress the spring to utilize its full capacity. Second, we need to ensure that as the spring uh, decompresses, the energy is released evenly. This is why the mainspring has a unique S-shape, which helps to achieve these two goals. But why are these aspects so important in a mechanical watch? And how does the S-shape help us to achieve this? Imagine when you start exercising, how in the beginning, when you're full of energy, your performance is strong, consistent and precise. However, as you start to fatigue, your performance becomes uneven and less efficient. This comparison illustrates how uneven energy distribution can affect outcomes, similar to what happens with a watch if the energy release is uneven. Because any inconsistency in the release of energy from the mainspring can directly impact the accuracy of the watch. Furthermore, we also want the watch to run as long as possible, which explains why we want to achieve the full capacity of the spring and store the maximum power possible. But how does the S-shape of the spring help? To understand this, let's first look at how a regular coil spring works, because once we understand the behavior of the regular spring, it will be easier to see how the S-shape improves everything. When you compress a coil spring, especially a regular one, the coils near the center indeed experience the strongest compression, because they are tightly wound together. As you move outward from the center, the coils are less tightly wound, which means they can compress less under the same force. The uneven compression leads to uneven tension release when the spring is allowed to return to its original shape. This uneven release means that different parts of the spring will exert force at different rates and strengths as they return to their resting state, which is not healthy for the accuracy of the watch. Now the question is, how could an S-shaped spring improve this behavior? So here's how it works. If you look at the S-shaped mainspring, you see that the coils in the center run in the opposite direction compared to the coils at the ends. When we begin 
Coiling the spring from the center, we create tension, which is expected and similar to a regular shaped spring. But the interesting part happens when we start coiling the outer section of the S-shaped spring. As we continue to compress the mainspring, the coils at the ends push outward from the center. This results in tension being distributed evenly along the entire length of the spring rather than being concentrated in the middle, because the outer coils naturally move away from the center as we compress the spring, which helps to reduce tension in the middle and maintains a more balanced tension throughout. What's particularly fascinating about this design is that the same behavior helps us to coil the mainspring as tightly as possible within a limited space and fully utilize its capacity. This is because as we coil the spring tighter, the outer coils, which are shaped counter to the rest of the spring, must overcome an extra resistance to align properly. This extra resistance helps to achieve maximum compression of the spring. Now that everything makes sense so far and we're on track and have successfully found a way to store energy mechanically, the next step is to find a suitable location to house the mainspring and utilize it, which leads us to the next part called the barrel. So in the next episode, we will place the mainspring within the barrel and see it in action. And once we do this, the mainspring makes even more sense. In the meantime, if you have any questions, let us know at any time because this is why we're here. We're here for you. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned and see you next time.